One of the tenets of reactive slash declarative code, at least in the context of Angular, is not to manually subscribe to observables. Use the async pipe, use to signal, hide the subscribe by using a library, do something else, just don't manually subscribe. But if we don't want to be dogmatic about it, we need to understand more deeply why these manual subscribes are generally avoided and why sometimes manual subscribes are necessary or even desirable. The idea for this video was provoked by one of my recent videos on a simple state management approach with signals and RxJS that involved using some manual subscriptions. This came as a surprise to some people, as half of the videos on this channel are dedicated to reactive and declarative code, and generally I advocate for avoiding manual subscribes. But it's kind of funny because not only am I using manual subscribes here, I'm doing it in a way that most blatantly violates the key reason for avoiding manual subscribes, which is imperatively modifying state in the application. Yet that is exactly what I chose to do here. So let's first talk about why you don't want to do that and why I did that. We've already covered the concepts and benefits of declarative code many times over. So if you want an in-depth explanation, I'll link to some videos in the description. But the key idea is that with declarative code, we can understand everything we need to know about a particular thing in our application by looking at its declaration. Take this articles for page, for example. I can see what this is and how it will change over time just by looking at the declaration of articles for page. Its value is derived from the current page value. It will take that page value and use it to return a stream of articles from the get articles by page method. It will also initially start with a value of one. And if the data we are trying to fetch fails to be retrieved, the fetch attempt will be retried every time this retry subject is triggered. So we know upfront how this thing behaves. And at any point we can also react to this value changing. We never need to update this derived value. It will just automatically update any time articles for page changes. But what happens when we manually subscribe? In short, it pulls our values out of this reactive and declarative paradigm with well-contained definitions and automatic reactions into the imperative paradigm, which has spread out definitions and requires manual updates. So let's take a look at an alternative version of setting our articles for page with a manual subscribe. Now we can't see the complete behavior of articles for page and how it changes over time just by looking at its declaration. We need to look for anywhere it is referenced to see how it is being changed. This probably doesn't seem like that big of a deal with a small snippet of code where everything is all together like this, but articles for page could be changed anywhere. And as we add more code, things start to get more tangled and we might end up missing some behavior. Not only that, but now we can no longer react to articles for page changing. This code will only run once for the initial value of articles for page. If we want to make sure it updates properly, then we need to make sure to manually recalculate it every time articles for page changes. And things like this are easily forgotten. That is, in a nutshell, why we want to avoid subscribes when coding reactively and declaratively. Subscribing makes values not reactive and not declarative. But that doesn't mean we can never subscribe in this paradigm. In fact, there has to be a subscription at some point to use the value. So when is it okay to subscribe? Generally, you can subscribe manually if the data you are pulling out of the stream has finished its journey in the application. It's okay to subscribe to display data in the template, although this is typically handled by the async pipe or through a conversion to a signal rather than a manual subscribe. But still, a subscription is happening behind the scenes. So this is okay to do because the value isn't being used to create some other state in the application and other parts of the application no longer need to react to the data it's just being displayed on the screen to the user now. You can kind of think of the template as the output of the application, and that is the end of the data's journey. It's also okay to subscribe if the data is leaving your application. For example, you might want to subscribe to trigger a post request. This is also fine, as the data has reached the end of the journey in your application, it is leaving your application entirely and going somewhere else. So there are ways to handle post requests without manual subscribes, but this particular situation does not break the ideas of reactive and declarative code if you do manually subscribe, assuming you aren't then using the response from that post request in your application. Where you want to avoid subscribes is when the data is still traveling through your application when it's in the middle of its journey. In short, this means we don't want to subscribe to an observable and then set some state in the application like we did 
in our articles for page example. This brings us back to the example that inspired this video. You might notice that I am very explicitly subscribing here in order to directly modify the state in the application, the very thing that we are supposed to avoid doing. So why is this okay? To be blunt, it's not. I am just blatantly breaking the rules. But I am breaking the rules with an understanding of why they are there in the first place and what specifically I am trying to achieve by breaking them. What I am doing here is creating one targeted area of imperative code where we make the jump from one reactive paradigm with RxJS to another reactive paradigm with signals. RxJS is great for managing events, signals are great for managing state, and this allows me to combine the two in a way that allows people to utilize the power of both, but it also doesn't require newcomers to RxJS to understand the more intimidating aspects of RxJS. In short, I'm making a small sacrifice by introducing some imperative code that makes the approach as a whole much simpler to understand. And we don't really lose much here. We do lose some declarativity, but there is at least still only one place where the state is updated and everything after this point of the state being set can be declarative. And since we are using signals, we maintain the reactive aspect as we can easily react to values changing and derive new values. So it's okay to break the rules as long as you first learn why the rules are there in the first place. Uh, it's a good way to keep dogmatism out of your code and to help develop your own ideas. If you found this video useful, uh, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you again for the next video.